Dr. Lisa Weidman, I appreciate you joining the podcast. Um, found you on Instagram. Um, well, so it's World Carnivore Month. It's the it's uh, approaching the end of World Carnivore Month. So Mike and I, um, we have two vastly different diets. Mike is probably more vegetarian. Is that fair? Yeah, like plant based. Plant based, and I'm. Uh, mostly meat, uh, but the World Carnivore Month, of course, I dive all in and I, I do mostly carnivore. So we thought it'd be interesting to talk to someone prominent in the field. And uh, I found you on Instagram and you have a quite the following and I see you doing a lot of speech and getting, uh, speaking engagements. So it just seemed fitting to have you. Yeah, it's great to be here. I'm, I'm so passionate about this because of I've, I've done this for 13 years now. And through all these years of coaching people and talking to people and being in this whole carnivore space, I've just seen thousands and thousands and thousands of, let's just call them anecdotal stories of people healing themselves of anything and everything, bipolar, anxiety, depression, diabetes, hypertension, any sort of autoimmune, like achy joints, arthritis, IBS, Crohn's. I mean, the list goes on. There's not anything that I've yet see, you know, seem to not be at least improved or totally reversed on this. And so it, and it's really getting people to understand also, and it's not so much, you know, everybody go carnivore. It's, it's, it's really getting the word out that sugar is extremely addictive and extremely toxic. It's inflammatory. It, it is the cause of many diseases as is, I'm going to say equally, if not more, the seed oils, canola oil, soybean oil, corn oil, sunflower oil, they are really, really inflammatory and toxic. And there's just so much mounting evidence that looking at the past history of 100 years ago, when the usage of all these oils came into play and more and more, it, the the, the obesity and the disease rate of our society has just gotten worse and worse. And the, the companies use them because they're cheap. They allow the food to stay on the shelf a long time. And it actually, it's one of the components that makes a food addictive. These food companies actually have addiction specialists that like kind of futz with the recipe to get the sugar, the salt, and the fat ingredients just right to make them as addictive as possible. You know, and, you know, it's hard to understand the fact that it, it is a true addiction. People don't think of it as cocaine or heroin or cigarettes or alcohol, but it is equally, if not more. And there are, there's, there's a famous study that um, sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine. And yeah. it's really interesting how they did the study and showed it. And I, I totally believe it. I mean, I was, um, I was for 30 years on that train of could not get out of eating disorders, binge eating. I, I, I was just the sugar and processed food was such an unbelievable draw. And for, I think just like alcohol, it's extremely addictive for some people and other people can moderate it and just have it sometimes. Although those same people, when you say, well, try giving it up for 90 days, they're like, what? Are you crazy? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what, um, personally, what made you want to dive in, um, to low carb? Cause your, your Instagram profile says that you've been low carb or carb free for, for 12 years. Right. So what kind of like pushed you into that direction? Yeah. This podcast episode is brought to you by BCN supplements. Mike and I have teamed up with BCN and we're so excited about it. Now, if you're new to the fitness world or you're just starting to get in, BCN has legitimately everything you're looking for, whether you want healthier hair, skin, um, nails, if you want to get a good pre-workout drink, or if you want a vitamin, BCN has what you need. One of their products I love is their collagen mix. It's legitimately so easy to use. I know you're thinking, why is a guy taking collagen? But it helps with everything, muscle recovery, muscle mass, it helps with your hair, skin elasticity, and you can take it with anything. You can put it in water, you can put it in pancake mix. I take protein pancake mix, so I like to use it in that. Or you can put it in coffee or if you're on the go. Um, just one scoop is all you need, and you're gonna help your hair, your skin, muscle mass, muscle, your joints, everything. Head to bcnsubs.com to place your order today and be sure to use CWJM to receive a whopping 10% off your next purchase. And be sure to check them out on Instagram 
at BCN Supplements. BCN Supplements, helping build a better you from the inside out. Yeah, so so March will be 13 full years for me of, of carnivore because, like I said, as far as my long history of, of just carb addiction, pretty much from for, for about 30 years, I knew it right about in my early teens. I was about between 14 and uh, all the way through the age of 44 when I actually found and figured out, just thank God for the internet and thank, thank God for... There's a group Charles Washington formed called Zeroing In on Health, and I happened upon that group, and it was a small group of people that were kind of figuring out that Atkins induction phase, which is basically carnivore, meat, seafood, eggs, and and dairy, um, was working so wonderfully that why not just keep doing it, and why not do induction for life if I feel so great and I'm dropping down to my lean body weight, and so that was really the point where... um, you know, I, I kind of hooked into this where there was other women on there who were writing, like everybody kind of kept little stuff. This was way before Facebook. So, um, and there was women in there that were talking about um, resolving themselves from binge eating and sugar addiction. And it's like, wow, let's jump in and do it. Uh, this can't be healthy, but let me do it. You know, <laughs> let me just, so I, I just said, you know what, I'm going to start it. I'll be my own experiment. And then over time, over the next few months to a year, this group was really intent on, we, we you know, would read um, Stephenson's book, Fat of the Land. These are old books, and there's a lot of old um, writings of how powerful it is that we should not be eating breads and starches and, and all that. And then, you know, then the big question comes up. It's the first thing people ask is, what about vegetables and fruit? How can you be possibly healthy without eating fruits and vegetables? You know, and I say, well, there's every, every vitamin, mineral, and nutrient you could possibly need is in, is in meat. And there's nothing that I'm missing. And the bioavailability actually of vitamins and minerals in most plant matter is not nearly what it is in, in meat. And then when you delve even deeper um, and, and you, you, you can follow people like Dr. Paul Saladino, he um, does this, these great little ditties about kale is bullshit, broccoli yeah. is bullshit. <laughs> because, and, and then he'll go into, there's oxalates, there's phytates, the, the leaves and the stems and the roots of plants have protective toxic things in them to try to keep them from being eaten by predators. Whereas in animals, they have the ability to run, they have fangs, teeth, they have claws, they have a way to protect themselves that way. So the, the, you know, the, the meat itself does not have the, you know, things like the, the vegetables do. Um, fruit is, is kind of like another issue where um, some fru- fructose in general, you can read a lot about how fructose is really not healthy for our livers. It's not, you know, there's, there's all sorts of scientists and physicians go on YouTube and you can actually see, um, these, these lectures they've done in front of, you know, uh, you know, medical professionals that, that it's, it's really not healthy. And for me personally, um, so Saladina will say that fruit, because it is, really the part of a plant that's meant to be eaten so that the seeds can then be, you know, spread by right. the animals crapping them out after they eat them, um, that they're the least toxic of, of a plant. So um, in, in particular, avocados, uh, which is a fruit, olives, you know, are the better fruits. Um, most of our fruits right now that we eat are big sugar bombs. They've been altered and modified through the years. Fruit used to be tart sour cherries and crab apples. <laughs> they didn't have the gala apples and the Granny Smiths and the these and the the grapes and the watermelons. They're full of sugar, and it's just really. Uh, and for people who have true um, sugar addictions, that's a slippery slope, and that's nothing with the taste of sweet. Artificial sweeteners, fruit, anything with sugar um, should be eaten um, to totally eradicate the cravings. Yeah. It's it's funny. We, you know, we can have uh, different diets, but I think everybody comes to terms when we talk about just eliminating processed food. 
Uh, that alone does a lot. So it's funny we can, you know, find a common ground with that. Um, I was curious, um, talking to John, he's getting started in all this. Um, it sounds like the carnivore diet can be a lot of things for different people. Like some people will allow uh, fruit or, or different things like that. What does a day in the life uh, look like for you as far as, you know, what do you eat in a day? What do you not accept as a carnivore diet? Um Things like that. We we run into diets that have like a junk food version too, like like dirty keto or things like that. So, what are your views on just clean carnivore and what what carnivore should be and what you yeah. do? Yeah, yeah. So, so the first thing I'll say in in response to that is that yeah, it getting processed food out is is absolutely number one. And I, I tell people who I coach, I go, don't eat anything that comes out of a bag, a box, a bottle, or a jar. It's made by a company to try to make money, right? And they they process it. They, you know, even, even something as simple as like mayonnaise. It's got like, you know, 12 ingredients in it and it's got soybean oil. It's so not healthy. Um, and, and so if you stick to meat, seafood, eggs, and cheese, as far as true carnivore, that's that's the you know really the 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 bottom line for carnivore. But um, I include spices. Um, I have no problem with salt, onion powder, garlic powder, paprika. You know, I, I like to do dry rubs on my meat and smoke them and barbecue them. And you know, it makes it makes for um, a, you know a nice variety. Um, now going back to the whole keto thing, there are. <laughs> There's so many people who, let's say you come from the standard American garbage diet and you're like, all right, I, this thing's healthy. I hear all about keto. And that person will jump in and start this keto thing. And then you're in the store and you see keto bars, <laughs> keto cookies, keto granola, keto pancake, right? And now all of a sudden you're just trying to mimic those foods that you were so addicted to that you want. And then now you're having all sorts of almond flour, coconut flour, monk fruit, artificial sweetener, swerve, stevia, you name it, just to try to get these things to taste like what we were addicted to. And um, it it really, it comes down to most of those people end up having initial success because they're getting off of, you know, all the garbage, right? The cookies, the ice cream, the 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 all the junk, right? But now they're in a whole nother and, and they do well for a period of time. And then inevitably many of them end up coming into the carnivore world because they realize there's a definite limitation when you include all that keto pseudo food and it doesn't work because it's down the slippery slope. The next thing you know, you're well, you, you know, I just know from so many years experience that that type of keto is, is um, typically a, a, has a certain lifespan to it. But for me, um, I, you know, I, I know to the average person probably just listening to this and not really um, in this, this whole world, but yeah, they'll say, what do you have for breakfast? Well, I don't know. The night before I probably grilled three ribeye because I just make extra and I'll have a, a delicious cold ribeye whenever I get hungry the next day, or it might be, you know, ribs or pork chops or, um, I might have a pound of ground beef and put some taco seasoning on it and sprinkle a little sharp cheddar and some sour cream, because again, that's all from animal, and you know, animal. So that's the, the question people, well, can I have nuts? No. Did it, did it, <laughs> was it once alive or did it have a mother? You can ask those two questions. Some people then, might, did, some people might disagree and be like, yeah, nuts are alive. Nuts are uh, <laughs> <laughs> in, a, in a living plant. Yeah. Did it have, did it have some sort of beating heart at some point? So, you know, sour cream comes from the cow, it's dairy, but some people don't even do well with dairy. I personally don't feel like I could have transitioned into this whole way of eating without dairy, without relying on some cheese. And, um, it, it, it's different for everybody. Some people have such extensive health issues that they really do need to eliminate everything, you know, go, go down to ruminant meat and water and, um, and then go from there and slowly add in what might be possible, like chicken and pork and seafood. But, um, so, you know, a typical day is just never typical for me because it, you know, it's, 
it's like people are like, well, you must get tired of eggs and bacon for breakfast. Well, no, I, I really don't eat eggs and bacon for breakfast. <laughs> if I'm out with friends and I'm going to order an omelet, I'm at a restaurant. Sure. I get the meat lovers omelet, hold the toast, hold the potatoes. And, um, and, and it's, and it's all good. Have an ex and I, I'll also have a side of bacon and a side of sausage, please. <laughs> Can you explain what the ruminant animals are? Cause I don't think a lot of people know what that is. Okay. Yeah. So it's basically animals that graze on grass. So it's, you know, it could be elk, bison, cat, you know, it's mainly, you know, for, for people that need ruminant, um, meat for, for special situations. I don't know if you've ever heard of Michaela Peterson. She's a, she's young, she's in her twenties and, you know, she, she has quite the extensive history of health issues that she resolved. And she found that she needed to do what she calls the lion diet, which is the ruminant meat and water. So, you know, lamb, beef, you know, I guess you could say, you know, lamb and beef, but I would never suggest anybody start off with that or even have to go to that. Um, I'm just bringing it up because there, you know, there's some situations where that's, that's what people do and that's how they eat. I'm, I'm fortunate. I can have kielbasa and sausage and, you know, it's not like I eat processed kind of meats um, often as a mainstay, but I certainly have, you know, um, at times, you know, I'm at a party and the only thing that's there that I can eat is a cheese and pepperoni tray. So I'll pick at that and then I'll go home and I'll have, you know, a steak. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> is uh so is cheese one of the car- uh, controversial um items to add because i feel like that kind of well i know carnivore is not really like about going against processed foods but it, cheese is pretty pretty processed right and uh i just see so many issues with cheese so i i've thought about car- carnivore um i i think the ide- ideology is there but i always think like why cheese though because there's so many uh people that uh, might not ha- have allergies now, but, or what is it called? La- like lactose intolerance. But I think it matters too, where you get your cheese from. Like, yeah, for sure. Like getting the, I don't know, the, the, the value cheese at HUB is probably not as good as getting, uh, there's a specific cheese that Dr. Uh, Paul Saldino always mentions. I forget what it yeah, is. It's, it's aged like Parmesan okay. Reggiano type yeah. cheese, like oh, wow. real quality Italian aged cheese. Um, yeah. And when you look at the, you know, the plastic looking yellow slices that are <laughs> the string <laughs> <typically>, cheese. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. That's certainly, you know, the far extreme of cheese as, as far as acceptability. And, but yeah, so cheese is one of those things. It's very interesting that we as humans, we're, it's, we're really the only species that eats or drinks the milk dairy of any other, you know, think about it. Nobody, no animals walking up to another animal and sucking at its teeth. Right. right? So that's it. So when you think of it ancestrally and naturally and normally, um, yeah, no, I don't think, you know, a, a, a nice block of fresh mozzarella is it's the, <laughs> the category of what caveman was eating, but so, and then I'll, I'll bring up the other topic with cheese too. Um, cheese has casomorphines in it and has its own addictive issues. And it can be quite an addictive draw for people and not so easy to give up and stay off of. So again, um, do I think, do I think it should be a large part of anybody's diet? No. Um, And again, like I said, for me, it was such a helpful transition the way I use it, because I mean, I, I want to be lean. I, I'm, I'm being, I want to be able to look hot in a bikini still. I, that's just, that's just how I roll. And cheese is not, cheese is not a fast Avenue for that. Okay. I'll just put that out there, but man, do I love cheese. And I'm even, I'm making a video because I show on Instagram how I, I fry different frying cheeses, which is amazing. You get that crispness and it's just so good. Um, but how, how I tend to do best with it to just keep it still in, in my life <laughs> without losing my best buddy um, is if I'm away on vacation, I would allow myself to have cheese or if I'm at a wedding and there's really nothing else there and it's like, ah, it's a special. So I'm, I'm yeah. having cheese. I ain't eating the wedding cake, but <laughs> I'm going to allow myself the cheese. Um, and also at home, um, I do really enjoy um, blue cheese, feta cheese. I get it crumbled and it adds such a nice spunk of flavor into like, I'll put that in with ground beef um, and I'm not sitting there 
cutting away at a brick of a big brick of, you know, nice old age sharp tenor, you know, but, and, and also I do have, um, I will have the aged, um, Parmesan, um, different, you know, aged cheeses or try to get aged raw goat milk cheese. Like those kind of things are actually way better than Velveeta. (laughs) (laughs) What's up? No, I'm not. (laughs) No, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. So I'm, so I'm not talking about, and, but Okay, let's just cut to the bottom line. Many people absolutely do better with no dairy whatsoever. No dairy. Yeah. And, 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 and anybody I'm coaching, when we talk about it and they get to a certain level, they're doing great. They've already relieved themselves of the, the sugar cravings. They've gotten away from and they're kind of in the mode, but they're still now they're at a plateau. They lost 20 pounds. They want, you know, they got 15 more to go. It's not moving. All right. Mm. Say bye bye to the cheese. Let's yep. let's you know. I say suck it up, Buttercup. Here we go. <laughs> now you're in for the ride. Yep. You know. So yeah. So that that's really my. Um, you know. I, I I guess that's really my best synopsis of of cheese. I know it was pretty long winded, but God, do I love cheese? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's one hard thing to give up. For that's sure. that's one of the hard the uh, transitioning from uh, vegetarian to vegan. That's every person's problem is cheese. And I think it's been related to cocaine too, like, or compared to cocaine too, like, uh, like sugar and even bread has been like, cause I don't even know if what's, what's harder is cheese or bread. Those are the, those are two hard components yeah. to Personally, take out. It's cheese for me, man. Yeah. But yeah, I, well, so just case in point with what I said with those casomorphines there, it, when you say it's hard to give up, let's say you say to yourself, I know it's not doing me good. I know it's inflammatory actually causes like post nasal drip and sinus issues. on A lot of people that they didn't realize until they actually gave it up and said, Oh my God, I can't believe, you know, how this changed. But so the, the definition really sort of of an addiction is when you, you know that there's a benefit to not having it in your life and you still keep putting it in your life, (laughs) you know, so it, so it's, it's really kind of crazy. And I say people, I said, give it up for 90 days. You can do anything for 90 days. I don't even like to say 30 because 30 is, you know, it's one of those things where, especially if you're trying carnivore for 30 days, some people just four weeks in, they're still in that slump of energy. Your body's still adapting to it. Your body has to just figure out that it's not getting this junk anymore. It's not getting carbs anymore. You're going to make your energy from the protein and fat you're putting in. And it's just remarkable how the body does it, but it takes time when you've eaten 20, 30, 40 years a certain way. And now all of a sudden you switch, you got to expect a, a, a nice little 90 day period to then all of a sudden have the fog lift and go, man, this is the best thing, the best way I've ever felt. I'm going to do another 90 and another. And that's how it really works for a lot of people is it kind of just snowballs. I feel so great. I don't want to go back to Right. To, to the other foods. Another thing that's kind of controversial to people is the st- sustainability of the carnivore diet or sourcing your meat. Um, and I'm fortunate in that my family owns ranches and I can source meat and, mm-hmm. and you know, process our own cows and uh, hogs and deer and that kind of thing. But for people that aren't fortunate or that live in a city and that don't go hunting, what do you recommend to those folks and what kind of meat are they getting? Because it's a big portion of it too is getting um, good quality meat, right? Like you, you want to try to buy organic as much as possible, but that's not always, that's not always possible for the average person. Yeah. And you know what, really, John, my, my thing is don't, don't even go down that road initially. I'm going to tell you, and, and let's start with the sustainability. People say, well, you can't, you can't possibly do that long-term. That can't be healthy long-term for your heart. That can't, you can't, To make it sustainable, just eat the meat you enjoy and eat the meat you can afford. I, I, for, you know, let's say most all of these 13 years, just, you know, got my, my meat at Costco when I was there, or I shopped the sales in the grocery stores. Um, And I, I, you know, like I said, my, my blood work is perfect. I'm, I'm healthy. I've got strong hair, nails, teeth, everything is going great. You know, I have no issues whatsoever after 13 years of basically eating, let's just call it supermarket meat. So I hate to 
send out the message, oh, you got to get grass fed, grass finished, blah, blah, all that stuff. Because I want the majority of the people to just jump in and just figure out to do this and how great they could feel and any health issues resolve. I mean, people resolve psoriasis, eczema, acne, you name it. It's, it's just incredible that it, our bodies can heal just by be given, being given the proper nutrition. So to thwart that effort in anybody who has a mindset, well, I can't afford that. I can't buy, you know, all this, you know, who have kind of fancy stuff because that's what I got to eat. No, not true. I, I really don't feel like, I mean, do you think there's a big detriment to me? What did I have any beef that had any sort of antibiotic or hormone treatment? Yeah. But is it stored in the muscle of an animal? No, this, this stuff is not stored in the muscles of an animal. So again, is it minuscule? Am I going to die five weeks earlier than I would have died by eating only regenerative meat. I don't know. I just know that I feel great and I've never, never been healthier or felt better in my life. And I, I just, yes, ultimately now, once you get further into it and here I am at this point, I, I am really, at, I really want to be so conscientious now that I'm in it to buy regeneratively raised me. I, I, I love that whole thing. I hate the, the whole, you know, basically our, our meat is supplied by four huge conglomerate meat companies, you know, JB, uh, Cargill, you know, there are these, the, and so would I like to just now support the, 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 I don't call them the mom and pop farmer, but just support the, the, the big ranches that are really out there to, um, you know, raise cattle the correct way. Um, so yeah, so that for sure. And, and I would love if somebody out there is like, you know what, I'm going to do this the right way. I'm going to start off right off then. Yeah. Then hook up with, you know, a lot of these companies, um, you know, will, will ship the, the meat and, um, you can get on a, you know, a service and yeah, I, I, ideally yes. But again, like I said, I don't, I don't want anybody to think for a second, you can't, you know, live on ground beef from Walmart eggs and bacon from Walmart and do a thousand times better than eating hoagies and pizza and gr <laughs> nachos grande, yeah. you know, you know, and then it's, it's funny when I'm sorry, I'm rambling on, but no, it's good. Okay. No, I love it. No. <laughs> um, but it's so interesting how family, friends, coworkers will, will kind of come at and attack us new to this animal based way of eating, or especially when they hear it, it's carnivore and the, the insane, why are you flying that freak flag about, you know, what are you doing? Like, you're going to die of a heart attack. And they're there. It's, it's like you get barraged with this stuff. And I'm like, you know what? It's so funny. You didn't give a crap when I was eating ice cream and cake and muffins and, um, um, you know, all sorts of garbage you don't say a word then, right? No. Nobody's attacking you about why are you eating more potato chips, right? T potato chips are so friggin' toxic. They're, they're just saturated, fried, every single one that I've ever seen on the market <laughs> in, in oils, right. right? And, and, and not to, not to really go down that avenue right now here with this, but I am so passionate about talking about those what we call seed oils, because most people say seed oils. Oh, I don't eat them. I don't buy a jug of canola oil and use it at home. I don't, I don't cook with that. Like, all right, it's in everything. Look at your salad dressing. Look at your mayonnaise. Look at your crackers. Look at everything that's in a box, a bag, a bottle, and a jar. Nine times out of 10, it has one of those seed oils. Now, here's the, here's the, the, the kicker of it. Aside from if you want to really look at how much evidence there is that that is such a crucial part of the demise of our health and our society right now, those oils, um, <laughs> it's incredible how they even produce them. If you can go on YouTube and watch the, the processing of this machinery to, to deodorize it because it stinks, so they have to put a chemical in it to get the odor out of it, you know, all this stuff. Mm. It goes into our bodies and it gets absorbed in our fat cells. It's not used as energy, like fat energy. It is a, it is a non-usable, it gets absorbed in the fat cells. 
And here's the, the thing. It has a four year half-life. So if you stop eating it right now, no chips, no salad dressing, no barbecues, nothing. You stop right now, four years from now, half of what has been accumulating in your body is still there. It's just, it's very inflammatory. It's very toxic. And they're talking about how it, it really is, you know, from macular degeneration, which is near and dear to my heart as being an eye doctor. Um, and looking at the, you know, the line of seed oil increase through the past hundred years and macular degeneration increase and diabetes and heart disease. It's incredible. And it's not put out there because these food companies that, you know, have lobbyists and everything, they're making trillions of dollars selling this garbage. They don't want that information out there. No. Could you imagine? And any time and, and, you know, mass media is all on board with supporting who is sponsoring them and paying their paychecks, right? So it's the information is not getting out there. And so that's one of the things that I really like to talk about because I have so many people say, will a carnivore diet reverse my macular degeneration? You know, will, will it do this? Will it do that? It's like, you know what? Get off all the toxic stuff and watch the miracle happen because our bodies are incredible. They're able to heal. But the, 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 the other thing that I always really try to drive home with people is they expect they're going, I've been carnivore for six months and I still have a little of my, my, my eczema is better, but I still have it. Or I still have, you know, my, my blood sugar isn't perfect yet. I'm like, all right, you're, you're, you're 50 years old. And for five decades, you've been putting garbage in your tank. <laughs> and now five months later, you're expecting you know, it to be done in reverse and great. I say, you know, be patient. You've got to be patient with this. And, and, and really it, it, I'm just, you know, you can tell I'm just exuding <laughs> excitement. I want to just shout it from the rooftops that this is incredible. Is it easy? I say, I say it's the easiest thing and it's the hardest thing. The easiest thing about it is you get to eat delicious food. Yeah. I mean, you name it, you know, the pork chops, the steaks, the, the ribs, the, you name it, it's delicious. And you get to eat pretty much as much as you want. So you feel full. You don't have to count calories. You really, because our bodies have a natural shutoff mechanism with a great, good quality, you know, fatty meat, because that's what you're eating is fat and protein. And we have a shutoff and we also don't have a, an addiction, a drive to keep eating it. Right. You know, it's not. I finished my steak. Oh boy, I could really go for another steak. Where, you know, <laughs> steaks do we have here? But you know, you finish a piece of cheesecake, and then some creme brulee is going by, or a hot brownie a la mode, and people are say, "Here, try this, try this." Sure as shit, you're sticking your fork in it. You yep. know, it's not yep. like, "Oh no, I'm full." But if it was a steak, I'm like, "Yeah, I don't, I'm done." Um, so I forgot where I was going with that. Um, oh. We went, we went through a bunch of topics. Oh, I had a question. So, uh, yeah. the seed oils is what you said had the half-life of four years. Is that what you're referring yeah. to in your, in yeah. the fat cells? Yeah. Crazy. Man, I, I've never heard of that. That's uh that's very interesting. I'm, I'm going to need to look at that. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's a long if time. you want to put, put in your show notes, I'll send you a link to two really great, um, videos to watch. One's by Dr. Chris Kenobi. He's an ophthalmologist that did a huge amount of studying for seven years on this whole seed oil and the connection to disease and particularly macular degeneration. And he's got a great, um, just, you know, he, he just has this great YouTube that really kind of explains it and why you really want to avoid it like the plague. Mm. Um, and, and then there's another one that I have that I just really, I, I, I pretty much send to all the people that I coach and I say, you got to watch this. It's very impactful to them. When you see a French fry, I mean, we're talking to everything, the restaurants are the, the biggest culprit as far as French fries, all in, you know, soybean oil, corn oil, whatever their deep fryers are, calamari, you, you name it. It's, it's, it's in there. It's fried. It's soaked in it and you're it's eating scary. it. And it, it is, it's, and then, and after you watch these videos, you will totally think twice about picking up a French fry and, and eating it. And then, and I even say it was like, it was a sad moment for me when, you know, I'm carnivore and, you know, I'm, you're trying to eat out at restaurants and all right, I'll have the chicken wings and the burger, no bun. Right. And then 
then it was like the realization of this whole seed oil thing. And I was like, oh, those wings are fried in those seed oil. Yeah. But I'm going to give a plug for Buffalo Wild Wings. They fry their wings in beef tallow, which is so healthy, yes. so good. <laughs> that, was your, that was your problem, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yes. Yeah. And, and so, um, and the, and then the other thing is I, I just ate yesterday. I was, I was, um, doing my little due diligence, finding the, the right restaurant to have my meetup. Because when I travel, like I said, I announce it on Instagram and then I have people driving from three, four hours away coming in to, to meet me and eat. And I announce it, you know, a couple of weeks ago and I have 14 people that are going to sit down and talk meat and eat meat. So yesterday I went to this, I, I just, looked up and I found this local place called Mrs. Smokey's barbecue. And, um, and, and she makes her wings by smoking them. Mm. And then you have a choice of either after the smoking process, they can either be baked or fried. And I actually recorded this for Instagram. I didn't post it yet, but I, I'm, I'm standing there. So I'm questioning her. I said, Oh, okay. So, um, what are they fried in? And she got this look in her eyes, like, Oh boy, this woman's really, you know, <laughs> drilling me, me here. And she goes, and then she goes, not peanut oil. Like maybe thinking, oh, maybe this lady's got a peanut allergies and she's afraid of peanut oil. She goes, not peanut oil, vegetable oil. And like she's all proud, like <laughs> vegetable oil. Like, and and it's so funny because vegetable oil is such a misnomer of a term because there's no oil that comes out of vegetables. <laughs> it's seed oil. And that's why when I say seed oil, though, a lot of people are like, what's a seed oil? Well, all right, vegetable oil. <laughs> and so we'll just say, you know, soybean oil, um, rapeseed oil, grapeseed oil, like there's a lot, there's a huge list of these oils that are toxic. But the majority of when you look at a label like peanut butter, oh my God, partially hydrogenated cottonseed and or, you know, palm oil, and, you know, it's, it's, it's any and all, I just say, don't put oil in your body. And that's it. Well, people say, well, what about olive oil? I'm like, all right, <laughs> olive oil is somewhat acceptable, except for the fact if you do your research, they have determined from specific lab studies that 80% of them are adulterated mm. with canola oil or a cheap oil to cut in to cheap it, you know, make them less expensive and make more of a profit. And again, don't want to put that in our body. And then for me personally, I'm like, I have no use for olive oil. I don't eat leaves of any plants. So I'm not eating salads, right? I don't eat plants. So, or like, okay, do you drizzle it, put it on a steak and then season it? I'm like, the steak is moist enough. The seasoning sticks just fine to it. I don't need to put an oil on it. Um, and for that matter, as far as cooking, if you want to like sear like scallops, just, you know, I just cook with butter, uh, bacon fat, butter, or ghee, you know, or beef tallow. It all is perfectly good, delicious. And again, all, all animal based. Okay. Big question. Um, yeah. might be a little weird, but I, I'm, I, I, I'm sure people are interested in this and you've been doing this diet for a long time. So it's, it's really nice to be able to talk to you and, and see your, um, your experiences. But, um, as far as digestion, what was the transition period, uh, when going all carnivore and has it been consistent? Um, uh, throughout the 13 years. So you mean as far as my digestion, as far as like um, eating an all meat diet, how, how is your digestion? Cause we, we hear know how her poop looks basically. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. So, so the poop question is so common because it, it goes immediately to the question of, well, how do you get your fiber? Mm. Where's your fiber coming from? I'm not going there. Say, <laughs> and, and I, I said, I, I shit just fine. I, I, there's no <laughs> issue whatsoever. It's, it's, it's really not an issue at all. And initially transitioning, you know, if you listen to Joe Rogan, um, you know, he did the world carnivore month, I guess it was last year, maybe it was his first year. And then, you know, he, he talked about the first couple of weeks of having diarrhea. Well, yeah, you know, our bodies, again, they have to acclimate to now this proper way of eating. And it's so used to all this shit you've been putting in it for decades. Now, yeah, you got to expect some transition, but so for me, long term, yeah, it's 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 amazingly wonderful. It's just like there's very little. Okay, we're going to get into TMI here. There's very little bulk. It's very little volume because 
there's, there's no undigestible cellulose that you would get from plant matter or, or fruit, like the undigestible cellulose part of, of a lot of the plant matter that's not there. So, and there's meat is so, um, bioavailable as far as the usability, there's not much waste that has to go through. So the volume, like, so here we go. Yeah. The volume is really the, the volume and the frequency, but I mean, I still go, I'd say every day, you yeah. know, it's not, and it's, and again, perfectly comfortable, normal, no issue whatsoever. Um, you can read an entire book called fiber menace, which is pretty incredible, which discounts the whole issue of needing fiber. And there's some, there's some really interesting studies that show that the cellulose and fibrous part matter is actually what is abrasive to our colons and can cause polyps. Yeah. So, you know, it, so there's all sorts of differing, differing opinions and yeah, we can all go crazy trying to go down the rabbit holes. But the bottom line is, you know, if I, I tell people, if you feel great, you're lean, you're not on any medication and you have no di- medical diagnosis, you're on the right track. Yeah. Right. No matter what, if you, even if you're doing vegetarian, if you're not, de- I mean, there's such a high rate of depression and anxiety with vegetarians. There's a high rate of this guy bone, right here. <laughs> bone and, and people who switch off of that. And you can see there is hundreds and hundreds and thousands of former vegetarians that are putting out video and trying to shout it from the rooftop. I was in such a, they were like, I was in such a tunnel of, it's almost, I don't want to call it a cult, but it's an identity. You start to identify as being a vegan or being a vegetarian, that it becomes who you are. And it's hard to wrap your brain around the fact that, you know what, our body, there's parts of animals that we cannot get if we don't eat animals. There's, you know, so it, and, and there's so many people that just say, I suffered with this, 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 and I, you know, somehow you, 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 you learn, you realize, you open your mind to saying, you know what, maybe there is something to this. Let me have some steak and eggs and let's see what yeah. happens. But, you know, the, the study and Sean Baker just posted a big study on um, uh, the fragility of bones and the bone breakage of um, people that are um, vegetarian and, you know, just more and more. And that's not, and then, so the flip is you could say, well, where are your studies saying how wonderful, you know, carnivore is? Well, there's no money in it, right? There's no, there's the, the problem with so these studies cost millions of dollars yeah. and, and who's, gonna, who's really going to benefit from it. Um, and, and I tell people, this is the, the cheapest, the cheapest diet, you know, eat meat, drink water. Here you go. You're not buying products. I know there's a lot of people out there selling supplements and electrolytes and, you know, desiccated liver because they're insistent that you have to eat nose to tail and, you know, you got to eat the organs. And I'm here as living proof to tell you 13 years, I don't like liver. I don't like heart. I don't Ah, eat brain. (laughs) Sorry. I'm just not, I'm just not like mountain woman here. And, you know, just, um, you know, digging into this stuff. I, I just don't enjoy it. And I just, I don't feel if something is distasteful to somebody and it's not like I have a mental block of like, Ooh, it's a liver or Ooh, it's a heart. I've certainly eaten it and I've eaten a lot of weird things and I don't have a, a, you know, like an aversion grossity to it. It's just, I literally do not like the flavor of it. So what I, I, I don't understand what I'm, you know, I, I, I think I just like to say, you know what, I, I'm not deficient in anything. Um, I don't have scurvy from no vitamin C. I don't have, you know, signs of vitamin A deficiency or anything like that, that I have to go and try to really force myself to eat, you know, an ounce of liver every week. I just don't. So, um, and, and again, I don't, uh, I (laughs) eating the way I've eaten with no organs is a million times better than the standard American diet. Like, so we could argue anything about this and still say, you know what? Um, Even, even being vegetarian is a million times better than being standard American diet, except I happen to know a lot of obese vegetarians who, (laughs) I I guess Doritos are are (laughs) considered vegetarian, right? You know, so you can still be addicted to 
sugar and crap because I guess sugar's from sugar cane. That's vegetarian still, right? I mean, yeah. um, it's, so yeah. they all have so their traps. Again, yeah. All yeah. the diets have their traps with processed food. Like you're talking about the keto, the bars and all that. You could go down that road and get addicted again. So you're right. No, absolutely. Yeah. I want to go back to the, yeah. poop, the, the poop thing real quick. Here we go. So I haven't eaten out. Oh and, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't, I haven't eaten out in uh, two weeks. We've been cooking our own food and we went out and my poops, like you, uh, like you explained, have been good, like clean. Like I equate, um, my body's eating good. And I think I got this from you. Like if, if you don't have to wipe a lot, you're, you're pooping good. And that's the way I, my, my poop's been. Well, I went out last night and we went to, um, to Texas roadhouse. I don't know if you've ever been to Texas roadhouse. Yeah. Yeah. So I, all I got was like the big steak and I'm eating it. And I'm like, this doesn't taste like the steaks that I've, that I've been cooking at my house. Like it just, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't taste right. It tastes too good. Almost. It tastes like a fake, burger like when you go to mm -hmm. mcdonald's or something it tastes like a fake burger and this huh. morning my poop was outrageous like it was it was like like i was eating like shit again so i'm wondering if like what they cook their well, steak in or something so so your body your body gets used to your clean eating and your clean ways from eating what you know you're putting in your body at home and i'll have to say this because it's really just been as, as of the past couple of years that i really became enlightened to this whole seed oil thing so many restaurants throw canola oil on the grill mm. you know before they're grilling the and so bitches. i actually yeah. i actually tell and you can't taste it because it's yeah. pretty much um and it's pretty much odorless um but I actually now when I when I order out, I just I tell the the waste stuff. I'm like, I'm allergic to oil. You got to do no oil. That's I can have idea. butter. I can have plenty of but you can put plenty of butter on. But I am I, I like to just use the word allergic because then it just kind of triggers, you know, <laughs> them to be like, all right, I better tell the chef that we're not putting oil on here. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't know if that's it or if maybe there was a certain um uh, maybe seasoning they put on that has MSG in it that you're not used to or something, you know, could yeah. have just happened to have triggered it. Or it might have been, I don't know what you've been eating mainly at home, but maybe that ribeye was a lot fattier than yeah. the food that you've been eating the few days prior and it could trigger a little uh, something. What they, I, thought yeah. I, I thought I was playing it safe, but this morning <laughs> I, was, I was even telling my wife, I was like, we're, ne we're never going back there ever again. <laughs> Um, so <laughs> aside I, from the fact, aside from the fact that you got to smell those amazing rolls that they, they put that out. Was torture. Those. That was torture. Well, see, well, it, it's nice if everybody at your table is on board and you just tell them, don't bring it out. But when everybody's putting that honey butter and oh my God, these are the best. But again, you can't bring and stop. No, you know, no, it's addicting. And then you're like, oh, I'm getting kind of full, but <laughs> here comes my meal. <laughs> Do you yeah. Oh, and the, the one thing I just wanted to go back to that I just thought of that I was saying before that I, I didn't end up saying, but that how I said, this is the easiest thing and the hardest thing and the easiest thing, like I said, there's just so much delicious meat to eat. And there's so much variety. I, you know, people say, Oh, I get bored. I'm like, there's no boredom. Come on. You can make oxtails in your crock pot. You can like, you can go, you know, wild with this. If there's so much, you can start by a smoker, you know, and do all sorts of stuff. And then it's the hardest thing too. Why we live in a society where we're bombarded with it constantly. You walk into a grocery store, floor to ceiling. It's the chips and the Doritos and the Oreos. Yeah. Like before you even get into that second automatic door that opens is they're like, okay, here you go. <laughs> and then you walk in and then there's these round tables of all the fresh baked, you know, loaves of, you know, sour cream bread, you know, loaf and chocolate chip cookies. And it's, it's like you are bombarded constantly. So then there's one thing to say, okay, well, you just, you know, everybody knows you shop the perimeter, right? Mm -hmm. But Again, so that's one thing, but you know, you walk into a mall and Annie M's, you know, yeast pretzels are blowing in your face. This, this <laughs> <aroma>. <laughs> and, and, and you're like, who, who can't walk back by that without your mouth literally salivating? Yeah. And, you, know, you, have, you have to swallow because you're like, oh my God. Um, and then, and then everywhere you go to, you're at, if you're at an office job, people are baking stuff and bringing stuff in, people are sending stuff in, and you've got this out on the table, you walk in just to go get yourself a, a water and you're like, oh, Shit. oh, somebody <laughs> brought in donuts. Oh, and they're the specialty donuts from 
Jupiter donuts. They're not just, you know, Dunkin' Donuts, you know, oh my God, you got to try these, mm. right? Yep. So you deal with that. And then you're at a, um, whatever, a, a family holiday event. Oh, Aunt Helen made your favorite chocolate <laughs> mousse. Right? And it, it's just like, and then and, and, and get this though. So as, as a, let's just say somebody is a recovered alcoholic, right? Nobody would think to say, oh, just have, oh my gosh, you should try this bourbon. Yeah. It's double cask, you know, just, just this once. Come on, you only live once. Nobody's doing that to a recovered alcoholic, right? right. But think about it to a recovered sugarholic. People are doing it all the time. They want you to join in. They want you to, like, it's just like, you know, drinkers like to be with drinkers, yeah. you know, people who are indulging and, you know, going out and partying it up and all, they, they, they don't want you to sit there and have water and a bunless burger, you know, they're like, oh, try, these nachos are, you, you've never had, you know, chips like this, yep. you know, it's, it's, and that's, <laughs> that's why I say it's so hard. It's so hard. And then you watch TV and every other commercial, right? So then you're sitting there thinking you're doing so good, not sitting there with, you know, popcorn and chips. And you're like, and then you're staring at the TV. It's like, well, I guess I'll get up and get some pork rinds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you, but it's, Go ahead. Do you follow the Liver King on Instagram? The Liver King. Oh no. my god! No. You're gonna love him. He's right up our alley. Um, our alley. Yeah, <laughs> I'm away from the group. I guess. <laughs> no, 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 you're part of the group. <laughs> um, so you need to follow him. He, he's the Liver King. He's this big, broed out macho guy, and he he consumes nothing but meat, and he he promotes like an animal based diet. Um, but he eats something that he eats like as a staple in his diet is of course liver um dr paul saldino mike ba or sean baker always talk about it and then they also talk about bone marrow um so do you dabble so it sounds like you you don't dabble in liver at all but do you do bone marrow and what's well, the benefits I, of that I, let's say let's say um i do feel there is a very um important uh component of organs that are really healthy and that there might be something to it. And that ancestral man, as they, you know, went out for their hunt, they're killed, they drag it back to the village. Number one, there's not that much liver to go around, right? So you're not eating that much of it, even if you've got any. Um, and like, I, I think there's, there, there's the flip side. If you listen to um, Judy Cho, Nutrition with Judy, she's had some um, experts in the field of vitamin A toxicity and that you really should not be eating very much, very often all this liver because it's, mm. it's stored and um, it's cumulative. It's not something that like just comes in and out of your body and that, um, that there's something about not overdoing it for sure on that um, and dabbling in it. Yes. I've dabbled in it because through the years, like, yeah, you know, I'm sure it's healthy. Damn. I wish I liked it. But as a kid, I always liked liverwurst and I happen to like, like, um, foie gras and liver pate. So I started dabbling with recipes with that and, you know, chicken liver is much milder tasting than beef liver. And I to kind of do stuff like that, but in general, um, do you need to eat it every day? Absolutely not. If you ate it once a, a week, would it be beneficial? Probably if you had a little bit, I know even people who like myself really dislike liver, they will, um, cube it up and freeze it and literally pop it back as a frozen pill, you know, just like mm. throw it down like a pill, just pull it out of the freezer, uh, you know, a cube of it. And that's an interesting way to do it as opposed to paying certain companies that, you know, spend all this time and money to put it in a capsule and it's like, you know, 80 bucks a jar or whatever it is. And you want to get it that way. Fine. Mm. Um, but yeah, I kind of just, I, I dabble with it now, my, my latest and greatest, and I'll give you a link to put in your show notes. Um, there's this company called Pluck and they make a seasoning that is like Himalayan sea salt, smoked paprika. Um, I don't know, like a combination of a really nice tasting blend of spices and mixed in with that is freeze dried, desiccated, um, grass fed, you know, or high level quality liver, pancreas, heart, spleen and kidney. Wow. And it's mixed in there. And I'm going to tell you, and, and it's so funny because, so I get this cause I'm like, 
all right, let's give this a try. I'm always open-minded and I'm very ginger about it at the beginning. I, I, it's like a pound of ground beef and I take a, a teaspoon because <laughs> I don't want to taste the liver. I don't want it to ruin my meat. And next thing you know, I'm like adding it and adding it. I'm like, this stuff tastes good. And then I'm sprinkling it on my eggs and it's tasting great. And so I, you know, I promoted, I, you know, talked about it because I said, you know what, this might be the answer to people like me who really just don't want to eat a slab of liver every month even. Um, and it, like I said, it tastes great. And um, I, I just think it's, it's, like to me, that's, that's one of those things where I would rather do that than pop it down as a pill or throw it down as a frozen chunk. And, but to each his own, you know, no, there's, absolutely. there's options out there. Can you uh, hit on the beef tallow real quick and what that is? That way people, I don't think people understand or know what beef tallow is. Yeah. I don't know. What yeah. Is. So, so there's different types of fat. Um, and in, in particular, um, there's, there's suet that when it's rendered down, it, it's beef tallow. So it's the, the fat that's around the kidneys. It's fat that's surrounding the organs. It's not like what we're talking, like when we say, oh, I'm fat, you can squeeze some on your belly. This is specific fat that's around the organs. And it's, it's really healthy. It's, um, it's, it's great for cooking in because it doesn't give like any sort of, it's like if you cook in coconut oil, which I know a lot of, you know, vegetarians, vegans, and you know, a lot of people like to use coconut oil because it's, you know, per, per, you know, put out there as a really healthy type oil, um, you, you, you get a flavor off of that. Whereas, um, with, with the beef tallow, I, I, at least I find, I don't, there's not really any sort of a strong flavor, but, um, but yeah, so, it, and it's used now in, um, so here, here's, you can go keep going down the rabbit hole. So I do not put any like lotions or creams on my body, no chemicals, because that absorbs through your skin, your skin's your largest organ. Mm. So um, there's, there's some great beef tallow, and it sounds crazy, but yeah, I'm spreading beef fat on my <laughs> skin. Um, but it's, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's really, it, it works great. And the, the, the rule of thumb for me is I don't put um, anything on my skin, or my body that I wouldn't put in my mouth and eat. So absolutely no sunscreen. It's so toxic. Those chemicals are horrible. Um, and there's a lot to be said that, um, that sunscreens are, should not, you know, our bodies need the sun. The sun needs to get in our eyes, needs to hit our skin for vitamin D, not just vitamin D, but so many other benefits. Now here's the question. Everybody's like, Oh, skin cancer. Oh, burn. Oh my (laughs) God. What are you talking about? How could you not? Well, here's the thing, you know, why our skin burns and why we get skin cancer, because we've got seed oils and sugars and grains inflammation in our body. That's what causes it. Now, heck, you know, I could be proven wrong. And cause I'm a, you know, I want to say I'm a sun worshiper because I really feel good in the sun. I feel the sun is so essential, really essential to our bodies. I don't even wear sunglasses outside anymore. Oh my God, you're going to get cataracts. No, you know what causes cataracts? Sugar, seed oils, and grains. Inflammation in our body causes all these problems. The sun is so important for regulating our, our, you know, our circadian rhythms, our sleep, our stress, so many things. So yeah, I think that um, it's, it's really important that people understand. And it's funny because, but like I said, you, you just, go down the rabbit hole of yeah. this whole thing. Then it's like, well, I don't, don't use plastic containers. God forbid you <laughs> eat anything. And yeah. like, no, I mean, like even the, the, the water bottles that are everywhere, you know, you think, okay, well, they're not, you know, don't, don't heat plastic with food. Well, you know, those water bottles are transported in trucks that are hot as hell. And then I see them stacked up outside my grocery store, you know, before you walk in these stacks of um, sometimes the cases of the water. I'm like, they're in the beating, the sun's beating on them. All these, you know, these plastics are getting into our, our foods and our drinks. And it's just so, so not healthy. The, the problem, go ahead. That was just, I, I, that's funny what you said about the sunscreen and and the sun absorption. I did like a really restrictive diet for a long period of time when it's probably gonna seem weird to you. It was just, uh, was all fruit, organic fruit. But the big thing there was talking about um, absorb- uh, sun absorption and that the toxins that lie within your cells are the things that uh, are causing skin cancer. 
And it's funny that you mentioned that because I've never heard anybody else. Because uh, I, re- I read I read this book a long time ago talking about all this stuff, and I've never heard anybody else say it because <laughs> they all worship uh, sunscreen and all this stuff, but don't see that that could be a problem as well. Right. But I went through an extensive period of time of uh, sunbathing. Like every we get good sun out here in Texas, and um, I would just go sit out. And and it's it's yeah. it's interesting you mentioned that. Yeah. And, you know, the, the interesting thing is so many people who um, go from crap diet to carnivore will say, oh, my gosh, I don't burn anymore. I'm out in the sun and I can stay out in the sun so much longer than I ever could. And um, so and, and coconut oil actually has a natural SPF of about, well, it varies on what you read between three and seven SPF, just putting coconut oil on wow. your skin. And aside from that, not having any inflammation from not eating sugar, grains, and seed oils is incredible for just, wow, really? You know, this is this is what's supposed to happen? We're not told that. We're just sold copper tone and banana boat. Buy it, buy it, buy it. It's yeah. everywhere. You have to have it. And, the, you know, the Dermatology Association, which, by the way, is funded by sunscreen companies, you know, they're promoting, ah, you know, well... I'm not going to say too, for the average person who has eaten all the crap and has all the inflammation, maybe I, you know, I just still don't think they should be putting those chemicals on their bodies, but then you guys stay inside. I'm sorry. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, that's Why brim that? <laughs> or just get your ass inside because you don't belong in the sun with the way where, where, I, I might have missed this. Where, where are you from? Where are you at? <laughs> I live, um, born and raised and live full-time in new jersey oh i got and, that already yeah, All right. yeah. <laughs> I, I, you got that jersey got a, yeah i'm picturing I like a jersey some- girl accent though, you got a little I got, something i got a little i got a little uh i got a little spunk to me i guess the, the, the yeah. north she, she but, uh, but yeah but i'm in florida now for um mm. a couple months before i head back and get back to work as an eye doctor. And then, um, and I bet I'm working down here. I'm doing all my, I do coaching groups to help. I, you know, I meet with people every single week in a group. Cause I say community is the opposite of addiction. And if you're having a hard time, get off this stuff, get in with people who are like-minded or doing the same thing. And, you know, we're all kind of just eating meat and enjoying life and trying to make our way through. Yeah. So as we close out, Dr. Lisa, there's, <clears throat> there's a lot of information out there. <clears throat> for someone who's looking to get in um, on on the carnivore diet, and it could be pretty confusing. You know, if you watch, uh, listening to podcasts, reading books, reading articles, what's uh, the I guess the five things or four or five your top list that you could kind of narrow down for somebody that's looking to clean up their act a little bit? What's like the the top three things that you would recommend to somebody? Wow, that's tough. Well, so if you want to know the top three things, the the very first top three things, eliminate sugar, eliminate grains, which means rice, pasta, bread, potatoes, Mm -hmm. right? Like eliminate and then eliminate and eliminate seed oils. That's like the trifecta of the first step to get yourself on the road to being healthy. And then, and then if you want to go the next step, because then, so then you're an omnivore. So then you're basically down to meat, seafood, eggs, cheese, vegetables, and fruit at that point, right? I still don't, I, I'm so against like nuts, nuts are inflammatory. Mm-hmm. Um, people think, oh, nuts are healthy. Nuts a healthy snack, free amount of nuts on keto. <laughs> nuts are really high in omega-6. They've got a lot of oxalates. You t- just look up oxalate. Um, Sally Norton, if you go on YouTube, she's an incredible kind of expert on oxalates and you can read all about how spinach and almonds are the highest in oxalates. And you can really, I mean, I watch these people do these spinach smoothies and then they throw in kale and, you know, it's like, I'm thinking, oh my God, if you only knew how much of these chemical defense mechanisms that these plants are that got in them that you're, you're ingesting. And there's a lot of people that have to actually go through what's called oxalate dumping when they go to carnivore after, you know, there's people who go directly from vegan to carnivore. Mm-hmm. They, they literally, there's a number of people that, that have done that and do that because they're just like, all right, let's, let's jump in and see what this is all about. And then they, they never turn back. But so that's like the, 
you know, the first of it is, is cause that's hard enough getting that out of people's diet. So when I say sugar, I'm talking about sugar and artificial sweeteners, cause you really don't want that chemical either. And then, um, yeah, the, the grains and the seed oils, but, um, it, it's some people like to just rip the bandaid off and just say, okay, meat, seafood, eggs, cheese, let me give this a 90 day try. And other people are like, all right, this week's no sugar. All right. Next week's no bread. All right. Next week. So, you know, there's, there's a couple ways to do it. You kind of have to know what, what person you are and how you, you handle change. Um, and then the other thing too, is I'm going to say for the majority of uh, us, let's just say sugar processed food addicts, it's abstinence. There's no moderation. You're not eating half of a cookie. You're not <laughs> eating a eighth of a cup of ice cream. Come on, let's be real. There's no such thing as moderation when you come from that, that background. Yeah. It's abstinence. And I, I tell people, no matter where you are, you stay off it, you will feel amazing and you will, it, it, it's life-changing. And that's why, you know, here I am, I'm, I'm 57. Come on now, you're supposed to say, "Wow, you don't look 57." Was, oh right? my gosh! <laughs> I was literally—I did not think you were 57. I didn't want to—I didn't want to ask your age because it's not appropriate. But yeah, we're, yeah. so we're Texas boys. So we. No, we I to... said the only thing off limits was my sex life. <laughs> well, I, we'll get into that after the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but so I say, even 13 years out, and I work with people who are, you know, one week into this, two months into this, three years into, we're all two feet away from the ditch because it's so easy, so easy to let stress, anger, anxiety, boredom, loneliness, you name it, all of our stressors and our emotions lead to addictions. They do. We're just looking for an outlet. And when you get off of your, this sugar carb crap addiction, then, then what's it going to be? Well, hopefully you'll get addicted to something like yoga or meditation or, or, you know, going to the gym, something, because there's, there's, it's just so it's difficult. You know, I just say, you know what, life is, life is tough, but you know, one day at a time. Yeah. Well, Dr. Lisa, I greatly appreciate it. We had a fun time with you. How can people find you on Instagram if they're looking for a carnivore coach, all that good stuff? Can you, uh, you can listen. Yeah. That. So on Instagram, just carnivore doctor, one word. Um, that's where you can find me. You can DM. I'm really good about answering, um, people who write. Um, I have a YouTube channel where I have some great, um, carnivore recipes for like pork belly and a uh, carnivore quiche, which is like a crustless quiche that's meat. And it's just, um, there's just lots of great fun ideas to help transition into this. So that YouTube channel is carnivore doctor. And, um, I will also remember to send you the link. So if you want to put in the notes, um, yep. those videos that I think are really, really important for people to watch about the seed oils and then, I'm going to send you also that link for that pluck seasoning. Cause you might get some I'm going to do requests it. because it's, it's really, and, and I'm like, I, I, I kind of pride myself on Instagram as I'm not pimping products. I'm really, I, I truly, I don't need anybody's money. I'm, you know, I, I'm just passionate to try to let anybody, if I, I always say, if I can just help one person out of the hell hole I was in, I'll be so happy. And, you know, I'm so happy that, you know, I, I've, done that thousand times over now because it's just so impactful and you know here i am just any opportunity i get i like to just try to shout it from the rooftops and get up on my soapbox because it's it's just so life-changing for so many people and i just want um anybody who's even halfway interested just to say you know what huh she planted a seed <laughs> no pun intended <laughs> <laughs> dude she's good keep that jersey girl confidence that is that is hilarious i can watch that all day that's awesome yeah that's and I, I say to people because people say well you know i feel awkward you know I'm out to eat and you know i'm like ah you know like i gotta talk to the waiter i go i don't give a shit what people think about what i put in my mouth anymore like i did at the beginning i was like oh yeah all right you know i'll just kick around the vegetables on my plate i'm like just give me meat on the plate, please. Not, no, <laughs> just, just put the meat on the plate, you know? And so it's like, you do, you get this, um, this, this inner confidence of, uh, you know, I feel so good. I don't give a crap about what anybody ha anybody's opinion about my triglycerides are 36, you wow. know? And if you, if you really want the, the low down on total cholesterol, the lowest death rate is when your total cholesterol is between 180 and 280. So it's a whole bunch of BS. That could be a whole nother podcast on cholesterol, but 
if you have a cholesterol of 260 and your doctor's handing you a, a script for a statin, just throw it in the trash on your way out mm. and then and then email them the studies that, sh- you know, show, uh, assuming that you are now eating a good, healthy diet. <laughs> <Yeah>. but- <laughs> <laughs> I want to put that on there. <laughs> yeah. so, well, it was great. Thanks for having me on. It Thanks really so much. Great talk to you guys. I appreciate it. Hang on.